let's meet Simon, an average Kenyan man. He meets a neatly dressed lady. The lady claims to be selling designer cologne at a very low price. She offers him a sample and before he can react, she steps forward and sprays the drug-laced cologne in his face. He inhales it and the drug goes to work instantly, entering the bloodstream and the brain shortly after. Within minutes, Simon is feeling lightheaded, confused and somewhat clumsy. At this point, Simon's free will has been switched off. He will do anything the criminal tells him. She asks him to guide her to his house and he does that. On request, Simon calmly gives the lady all his valuables, his electronics, his credit cards, keys, even his rainy day money under the mattress. There have been cases of victims going to the bank and withdrawing all their life savings while under the influence of the devil's breath. Simon wakes up after 36 hours of unconsciousness to find his house empty. He does not remember a thing. When scopolamine comes on board, it blocks the initial stage of memory, the encoding. Unlike most similar drugs, victims of scopolamine are completely unable to identify their attackers after the incident. The most sinister aspect of the drug is its interference with free will. Scopolamine interferes with the working of a part of the brain called the amygdala. One of the things the amygdala does is shut down the thinking part of our brain so we can take immediate action in an emergency. The drug takes advantage of this to give a victim the inability to react to external aggression extreme submissive behavior and a willingness to carry out any command given. This is why scopolamine has been labeled the most dangerous drug in the world. 